Let's do some drywall. Alright. So this is the kitchen ceiling. We have the old school fluorescent lights in these boxes. They removed this cover. Now we're going to have to put square corner bead all around the edge. We're going to corner bead all this, square bead. We're going to fix the holes inside the box, touch it up, and then we're going to texture everything. They already put these lights up, so they don't want to remove the lights. So we're just going to mask off around the lights and work around the lights. First things first, put down some plastic on the floor, everything here. And then we're going to go ahead and install the square corner bead. When they remove those covers, there's like a fluorescent lights in these boxes and they have a plastic cover old style 70s and 80s once they remove that cover the trim they never put square bead on here so people like to take that plastic cover off switch out the lights put candle lights in there the easy thing they do to update the kitchen but once you remove that box cover now you're going to have to do the square bead some type of corner bead some kind of finish because it's just raw sheetrock raw sheetrock you could even do like a 90 degree piece of wood wood trim it but on here we're going to corner beat it mud it coat it and then match this texture this texture in here is like a santa fe skip and here's smooth so we got to texture everything in the box the same as this so let's get to work well it's not spray texture so i don't have to get the best masking job but i am going to put a plastic curtain up just so i don't get dirt all over their living kitchen they do live here so let's get some plastic up curtain all around. I'm gonna uh, need to get a bench. This is just over under seven foot so I can reach it up a little step ladder. I'm just gonna run paper masking around it. So let's go ahead and get the corner bead cut. I'm just using a square corner bead. If you do square corner bead you want your sheetrock at a 90 degree. If you do round bull nose you have to cut this sheetrock back so the bull nose can sit round on it. You can't put round bull nose on a 90 degree. Bull nose has to sit almost on a 45 degree. So if you did want to put round bead, you would have to cut back the sheetrock a little bit so the bull nose sits on there nicely. It doesn't like to sit at 90 degrees. But we're just doing regular square corner bead, so let's go ahead and get the square corner bead ready. I believe this is a 6 foot 6, 6 foot 6, and 2 3 foot 6. So hopefully I can get it with 3 full sticks of corner bead. Maybe I want to take the lights down so we're just going to mask them off. There's two ways of doing this. You can measure it and cut it. I'm going to need some nice high quality snips, metal snips. Since I know I'm going to have two sides the same, I'm going to do two pieces of the bead. Same size. I'm just going to literally put it right in the corner where you'll go over. And then I'm going to mark it with the snip. Just a little snip on here. And I'm going to cut it. Scrap pieces, if you are going to do something later on, maybe you can keep these scraps. If they're over two foot, they're worth keeping. Smaller pieces, just throw away. It's no good. If the edges are ragged, you can go ahead and clean it up with the snips. So now I got this side and this side to install. A lot of guys like to install corner bead with nails, hammer and nails, but I just like to use screws. Screws and nails, you notice in the corner bead there's holes, holes, holes. I like to start on the outside hole, outside hole, outside hole. These smaller holes, and I start on the center of the bead, and then work my way on each side. So you need your screw gun, 
Then of course this is half inch sheetrock, so I'm going to start with an inch and a quarter coarse drywall screw. If I don't catch it with these inch and a quarter screws, then I kick it up to the inch and five eighths screw. So these are my two screws to go to. This is usually for five eighths sheetrock, this is for half inch, so I always carry both for each style. But we always start with the half inch type screws, these are inch and a quarter. Go ahead and place your piece here, hopefully it'll cut it and it'll fit right into place. A little bit tight, take your snip and just take off fat. It's just over a little bit, not even one eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to clean up the edge, the cut edge, the cut, nice and clean and square. And then it's going to fit. fits nicely here. So I'm going to start in the center. I want to make sure this thing ain't rocking and rolling. It's sitting nice and flush. I hold in the middle, start in the middle with your corner bead. I'm going to start in that outside of the hole in the middle of it on the bottom. So that's tacked up. And I'm going to go through and work my way over as I'm pushing up on the next outside little hole, another one. Next hole. And just continue on tightening up, do the whole bottom, then do the top, do your corners. You can do hammer and nails if that's your style, but the good thing is with screws, if you make a mistake, you can reverse your screw and start over. To get the bottom done, I also then I go to this top, start in the middle again. One. Tighten it up nice and tight. It's the outside small hole you catch the stud. The inside bigger holes, I never put screws in those. If you don't have wood framing here, nothing to screw to, you're going to have to use a different type of bead, like a plastic bead or a mud on bead. A plastic bead you can staple it on with like a standard staple gun. Mud on bead, you would mud the bead actually to the drywall. The only time I use those type of beads is like metal framing or if there's no wood studs to get screws into it. In the corners your most important part, always get a screw top and bottom corner of the bead. Right an angle makes it nice and tight. Any bulging areas, if you see any metal bulge out, you can go ahead and put a screw in the center just to tighten it up. The metal should sit nice and flat. There shouldn't be no bulges, no creases, nothing in the metal. It should fit nice and perfect. Since I already cut that other side, it's going to fit right into here. Just like that. Same size, fits nicely. Same thing here. Holding the middle, hold the middle. Get a screw. That's why I like these magnetic tips. I like the longer ones, extended ones, so I can reach it. Right in the middle, sit nice and flush. Held up. Continue on. The outside hole, outside hole. Do every one. You don't just do one here, one there. I do every hole on the outside. In the corners, most important. There's no hole there, but that screw will go right through that corner bead right in the corner. Nice and tight. Continue on. I'll just start in the middle. Keep going. Either direction, no matter. Outside hole. There's other techniques that are faster. Hammer nails. If you have a special clamp tool you hit with a hammer that pinches and beat on. Most people are just do this style. Everybody can have a screw on and screws. If you make a mistake, you can at least back the screw out and redo it. Once you hammer it on, nail it on, it's on there. You ain't gonna be able to fix your mistakes as easily by trying to pull a nail out. The screws make it strong and secure, it won't back out. It just takes a little longer to install, that's all. A couple more. One in the angle for sure. Just like that. So now I got the two six foot sides, now I just gotta do these sides. I'm not gonna bring a big old piece of corner bead in. 
if you're really desperate and you don't have enough corner beads, you can butt up the things, but then you'll have a seam. So it's always better to use a full piece whenever you do corner beads. You don't want to splice it. Try not to splice it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to measure this one and just cut it out there so I don't have to bring a 10 foot stick in the room. I'm just going to take the outside edge, not right in it. I'm going to go out another inch or so so I can cut it back. She's right at four foot. Yeah, four foot, four foot. Easy enough. Four foot on an eight foot stick gives me two pieces. So I'm right on the money. So I'm going to cut it right on the money. I'm measuring with the snips. Nice pair of snips. Cost anywhere from ten to fifteen dollars. They have different snips. Left, right, center snips, they all work the same for cutting beads. Some guys like to use left snips for cutting round bead. It just depends on if you're right or left handed. Just clean up your edges. Some guys even like to take the tabs off the corners. That's fine. It ain't going to hurt. Well, hopefully this fits nice. Let's double check it before we... It's tight. So I'm going to just barely take off not even one eighth of an inch. Nice, clean, no ridges, no sharp pieces sticking out. Okay, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but you want this square to meet up with that square. You don't want this down that. This is the most important part is where this square meets that square. So it's nice and flush. You don't want something sticking out or deep. So I always check this area. But same thing here. We're going to start on the center. Hold the center. Kind of double check your edges. Make sure they're pretty close. Just hold it up. Get your screws. Start on your center outside hole, get one screw set. Since I'm working corners here, instead of going all the way over, I'm going to line up these two and I'm going to put a screw right there so I know that's flush. Some guys like to even put a screw on the outside edge right there to catch it, to be able to catch it. You can also take a hammer and you can hammer it up so these are flush. That's a nice transition. These are flush with each other. That's flush, that's flush. Go ahead and put screws. Tighten it up. Same thing here. Same thing here. See how it's going down? So I'm going to make that flush. Flush. Hold it flush. Then set a strip. There. Flush. If it kind of moves up like that, go ahead and put another one. Whatever it takes. you got to catch the stuff. Look at that. All right. Held good. I'm gonna go to the outside hole. Outside hole. One more. The bottom stick here. Same thing here. Now the inside. Let's go to the middle. fluorescent lights. Ideally you want to fix all this, do all that before you put any lights in. Drywall anchors, get those out of there. And this is kind of loose. So I might put a couple screws in to tighten this. in the ceiling since they had a box in here. I'm going to throw a couple screws in here. Tighten it up. Just a little bit. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Alright. One more bead. Now, 
one on the outside hole, every hole. Take some of 36 inches or so. Corners, corners, the bottom's up to here, and I can do the middle. Think everything's secure, double check everything. Everything's symmetrical layout, got screws in all the corners. And this one here, always double check. This one there, and this one here. Also in the bowing area, see that's kind of popped the metal there? So I'm gonna put a screw right in the center and tighten it up. In the other bowing area, see it's kind of not sitting as nice as I want. Everything looks good. Double check, double check. Everything looks good. See everything is nice trimmed out. Looks nice just like that. We use three eight foot sticks, a square bead. Two of these were six foot, six foot, and then one four foot, one four foot. The only thing that got wasted was two pieces, two little two foot pieces that I might keep for a repair job. But simple square bead. I like to use metal square bead. There's so many different beads on the market. But if possible, always use a metal bead. That's the go-to strong material. The only time you'd use paper mud on bead if you had nothing to put screws to. You'd be able to screw there on that outside edge. Outside, outside, outside. So a nice symmetrical layout. Nice pair of snips. These are brand new snips. So these will last a long time. That's pretty much it. We got it all hung. Fiberglass. Fiberglass tape. I'm going to actually run fiberglass tape right over that flange. This is not needed, but it prevents this from ever cracking. This is going the extra mile here. I'm going to fiberglass mesh it. I'm going to fiberglass mesh that. Any small little holes, I'm going to go over and scrape all that stuff. Any loop goobers and stuff in the walls, the ceiling, I'm going to scrape all those up and get it all fiberglassed, all this corner bead fiberglass, top and bottom fiberglass, and then I'm going to go through and do a first coat. So let's go ahead and do fiberglass mesh tape. This is an optional step. If you do this step, it'll prevent any cracks on your corner bead. Pop corner bead. I know you've seen in houses where they have cracked corner beads. The corner beads pop out, cracked out because they never tape the corner bead. And all it takes is someone hitting it and then it cracks out, pops out. Well, let's go ahead and get this fiberglass. You can go ahead and put the fiberglass on like that. It bonds pretty well. I'm not going over it. I'm just going right over the flange. It's taping the corner bead right to the sheet rock. And follow through all the way, all the way. Cut it with my knife. Keep going. Keep going. I'm using up this last roll before I use my new roll up. All the way up. All the way around. Alright, use that old roll up. Now I got a new, brand new roll. Fiberglass mesh tape, you'll read a lot of people talk about on the internet different types of tapes to use for drywall. You got paper tapes, fiber fuse tapes, this tape, this tape, this other tape, so many different options out there. Trust me, basic, regular, white fiberglass tape is good. Some people like the yellow or blue fiberglass tape. All that color is on that is so you can see if it needs more mud because you see the yellow or blue tape shining through. Good old fashioned fiberglass tape, if you use it correctly, it'll never crack out. I use this because I have to warranty my work. Warranty, warranty, warranty. So that's why I use fiberglass mesh tape. This is the only product I'll use. I'm sure there's other stuff on the market that's better, but I'm not going to experiment. So I use what I know works, and I'm going to stick to this product only. Fiberglass mesh tape. Continue on, fiberglass in your corner bead. I'm going to go all the way around. Like I said, you don't have to do this. This just prevents any cracks. Metal pops, we call them metal pops. A simple step like this will save any cracks, just give it better quality. The whole bottom's done. Get on my step ladder and then I'm going to go inside. Go all the way around, all the way around. Spend an extra five minutes with some fiberglass tape, it'll save you.
cracks ever happening in the future. I do this on all my corner gates. Go all the way around. All the way around. All the way around. All this, all this old stuff. We're going to have to touch up this inside of the box. They left it smooth. We're going to touch it up. Fix these nail holes from the old fluorescent lighting. They have those big four foot old school fluorescent lights in here. And there's no fiber left. A little hole like that, no problem. You can just do two or three layers of fiber left over the hole. We're going to fill it with a hot mud. These were from the light anchors themselves. The big drywall anchors to install the lights. So instead of pulling the anchors out, they just rip them out cause these bigger holes. If the holes are bigger than this, then you'd have to sheet lock them in. If the hole goes all the way through the drywall, goes all the way through, you always have to tape over the hole. Even a little hole like that has to be taped over. If the hole went all the way through there, it has to be taped over. You can't just fill it with mud. If the hole just went partially through the wall, then you can fill it with mud. But if it goes all the way through the sheet lock, you're going to have to tape over it. Fiberglass tape is perfect for these little holes. And rough goobers, goobers, goobers. Let's tape over this last corner bead. And then I'm going to double check all my work. Because after we get done here, we're going to do our first coat. Goobers here, these lights are really in my way, driving me nuts working around them. These anchors, you can hang them up get them out of the way. It's much easier just to hammer them up and fill them in with mud than try to pull them out. If you pull them out, now you have a big hole in the ceiling. So sometimes it's better just to hammer them up and fill them in. And the goobers, goobers. Everything's fiberglass meshed. It took me five minutes or so to fiberglass that and give you peace of mind knowing that the fiberglass you can also push the fiberglass down if you need be. The system pen doesn't like to stick. You can go through and push it down, no problem. Everything's pretty much ready, ready, ready. So nice fiberglass. Notice I didn't go over the edge. You don't want to see fiberglass on that sharp corner. You just want to stay inside of it. So we're done framing corner bead we're done fiberglass taping so now we're going to do coating on this i'm going to just use a 20 minute hot mud 20 minute that way i can do probably two or three pans at 20 minute get all this coated out and then we can let it dry all right i'm going to use a 20 minute i'm using a 20 minute because i have to finish this job in one trip but if you never mudded before just use a joint compound joint compounds you have to let dry overnight First coat, always need thick mud. This is a bigger knife that can fill in this whole area. So I'm probably just gonna fill in all this. Just to fill it in, fill it in, go right to the angle. Don't need a lot of mud. I think I can get this all coated, maybe two or three pans at the most. Get the mud on, I'm gonna go halfway that way, and then come back halfway that way. Now I got one lap mark, I went into the angle. Same thing here. Coat it that way. Light kind of around this plate. If you ever have to do these, do it before you install your new lights. Make life a little easier. First coat don't have to be perfect. Just a coat fill in. If you've never mudded before, just use a regular joint compound. Joint compounds are easier to use because if you make a mistake, after it dries the next day you can sand away your mistake.
I've got the whole the round here coated with one pan, so I'm gonna just take this extra mud here and fill in the anchor holes. Touch up any bad areas, rough areas. And then I just gotta mix one more pan to the bottom. mud here in the pan to finish seal around this vent. I'm going to go ahead and use up my mud right here in this tight area. Right along the vent. You could also remove the vent and do under the vent. But I'm just going to go right up to it nice and clean. Let's go ahead and mix another pan of mud. Alright, so I got my second pan of mud. I'm hoping to finish the bottom of this with this one pan of mud. That'd be awesome if I did it two pans of mud. Got it all first coated. I'm just using a 12 inch knife. I'm going to take this out as far as it'll let me take it out. So I'll put the coat on nice and heavy. See that tape? Stubborn tape. Push it down. I like to get all my mud on before I feather it off. So I'll probably go as far as I can around this. Halfway is fine. I'm going to feather it. mud I can pan. I'm going to lay the knife down flat so it gives a nice coat. Nice heavy coat on that corner bead. Any mud lapping that square bead that's on your edge of your knife on it. Get that mud off. This area here. And take it around. We're good to go. mud gives me plenty of work time to get all this coated. And while it's drying, setting up, I can clean my tools and plant plenty of time. I could also have used a five minute mud, but it would have probably been set up already. And then it'd be setting up as I was first coating this bottom part. So I wanted all this set up at the same time so I can turn around and flick it out. Get rid of your edges. I still have some mud in my pan. So I'm going to double check my ceiling, get some angles, any touch up areas, nails, touch ups that need to be done. I'm going to go ahead and put a second coat over these patches, it's fine. After they set up, we're going to flick it out. I don't want to use ice any material, so I'm going to get it all up. Throw a little bit of mud here, so I'm going to spit my pan. Pan. Scrape the pan. I have a little bit here, so I'm just going to put it on the first coat of up here just not to waste it. This is a corner bead, and I'm just going to almost do like a second coat over it, not pushing down hard. Just basically using up the material. Nothing to go to waste. Clean your corner bead, clean your corner bead. Go around, clean your corner bead. I'm going to do it now while it's still wet. Look at that. Two pans of mud. Got it all first coated. Let that set up. Let it set up, and then we're going to slick it out. Go ahead and clean your tools as it's setting up. 20 minutes. 20 minute takes forever to dry on glossy painted walls. This is still wet where the gloss paint is. 
but it's dry inside here where it's a flat paint. So we're going to go ahead and slick out the inside of this box while we let the bottom part set up a little longer. Go ahead and slick it out. This is the process done with only hot muds. It's called a slick out technique. On my channel I have several videos on all my patch jobs where I use hot muds. Five minutes and stuff like that. So once the mud starts setting up, like that, it's not totally wet, but it's not totally dry. you got to work the mud now. We're going to slick it out. Get it all slicked out. And then if need be, go ahead and do another coat. We're going to see how it slicks out. We might not even need to do a second coat since I coated this so heavy. Once we slick it out, we'll see what we got here. The texture is really rough, heavy texture, so we might not even need to do another coat. We might be able to do a heavy texture right over this. But let's go ahead and get it slicked out while we lay, let the bottom part where it's gloss painted, that green gloss paint, it's still wet. This is really wet, so we're just going to let the bottom dry as we work the inside of this box. Slick out technique, you need a clean wet sponge and a six inch knife. It's setting up, so I like to work the angles. I'm working the angles. Get some mud at an angle. You go in your corner bead. Just kind of go over it. This is not a silken wet sponge, but it is wet. Then you can kind of go every direction. If you're working the material on the knife, see how it's taking off the extra material? So there's more than enough material on there. So you're going to take that material, any rough areas, and take that mud on there and just fill it in. Some people like to go the opposite direction of their coat. That's fine. Go every which way. Any rough areas? need some more moisture, go ahead and just wet it some more. With joint compounds, joint compounds you let dry overnight, then you sand them and then recoat it. With a hot mud, is more professional grade material, you work it as it sets up. They also do muds like this for cement work, stucco, grouting, same thing. I don't know if you've ever done tiling before, but grouting, grout, you put the grout down and you kind of let it set up, whatever set time it is, and then you follow through with the wet sponge and you take off the extra mud. So this is almost like working like with the cement, but it's a quick set mud. Just follow your angles, just go around everything. I don't think I'm going to be doing a second coat on this. It's a nice coat, but I might do a touch up touch up, especially in these top holes in the ceiling, they were pretty deep. I'm definitely going to touch these up. I might use a five minute mud or a regular joint compound just to touch up everything. Once your sponge gets kind of dry, go ahead and dip it in your water bucket, fresh water. More water in your sponge. All that extra excess drywall, this, I'm taking the dust off of it, this is the old sheetrock. I'm going to get the dust off of it. That way the texture will bond to it a lot better. So it's not bonding to old dusty sheetrock ceiling. Go around, go around. Angle. Same thing in your angle here. This bottom starting to set up now. Not on the edge. So... By the time I get this all slicked out, we can work with the bottom. You have to slick out hot muds no matter what. They have to be slicked out. You can't just put this on and let it dry overnight or you'll be in trouble. You have to work with it and it's setting up. Don't put it on and walk away from the job. You have to slick it out at least before you call it a day on the job. Clean sponge. I'm gonna check the edge. Get rid of that edge. Always get rid of that edge. It's still kind of damp, but I can work with it here. Set it off. Set it. Set it. See how it's taking off extra mud. Deep areas like that, I can take some of that mud and fill it in. Look at that. Keep a nice clean edge here. Your square edge. I just keep it shiny. Everybody thinks mud needs to be on that edge, but no, it needs to be nice and square, 90 degree metal edge showing. Nice sharp, clean, sharp edge. 
So around the center of your edge is the most important. This bottom area looks rough, but it looks better than up there now. Also, because I put that fiberglass in there, it doesn't take as much mud to fill it in. See, we're taking off that extra mud. I'm slicking it out, taking off that extra mud. Redamp your sponge. I just took a water bucket next to me. Just work it. You're going to work in the mud. Slick out technique. I'm sure different areas have a different name for it, but I just call it slicking out hot mud. It's just working with any kind of cement, quick set materials. This is how you manipulate materials, clays, cement, hot muds, stuff like that. Same principles go into stucco, patching, stuff like that. Take off the extra material. Just keep on going around until it all looks good. Clean your edge, your edge, around that vent real tight. I'm going to push down hard right against the edge of this so it's not a big clump of mud. It's going to be feathered nice and tight. I don't want a big clump of mud. You're just filling in the bead. So around the edge, around the edge. Same thing. Keep going around, keep going around. This is hot mud technique. on the ceiling while I'm here. Finish off this corner. extra mud I have on here and putting another coat on these really deep holes that were on that ceiling over that I taped over three layers of fiberglass mud so I took off a lot of extra mud that's first coated slicked out I don't know first coat slick out looks better than most guys third coats so I don't want to keep putting mud on here I don't want a big hump on here so I'm just gonna go through now I'm just gonna touch this up it's getting a really heavy texture so the texture itself is gonna be pretty heavy it's gonna hide a lot so I'm just gonna go through now I'm gonna touch up the bad stuff the obvious stuff going to do a quick tight touch up on the bad areas and then we're going to follow through with the joint compound to do a skip trial Santa Fe texture match but this this 20 minutes setting up and it's still kind of damp so by the time we get it, materials ready to touch it up this will be nice and set up nice and tight around there that's a good job all this already a lot of work just for that just to put the corner bead around coming together though it's looking nice it's going to be really sharp once it's finished also if you haven't done it yet go ahead and subscribe like leave a comment this is a large project here long project so it's probably a long video so go ahead and just send me a like I'm doing this for you I know how to do drywall I'm trying to explain it while I'm working with my hands I'm trying to do as best as I can to help you guys out you'll see the process involved here so if you're winning doubt always hire a professional Let's go ahead and get this touched up. That way, we can get the touch up and start setting up so we can turn around and do a texture. Alright, first coat's all set up. Second coat's 
touch up set up I'm gonna be using a topping a topping is a joint compound with less glue reason I like to use toppings because it goes on smoother it doesn't leave bubbles stuff like that so toppings are good to use for textures at least for this type of texture it's hard to tell they call this a Santa Fe skip it's hard to tell in this lighting of course I'm working indoors so we're just going to do the Santa Fe skip here get it all textured and then texture on the lights so just a pan of this it's mixed up really creamy no clumps in it heavy heavy pancake batter consistency that's how I like most if not all my muds for textures most textures are a heavy heavy pancake batter consistency creamy no clumps if you got clumps in it you're gonna have to strain it with like a metal spaghetti strainer something like that but this is all set up it's ready to go so let's go go ahead and get it all textured out and get this area plastic cleaned up that way this can get to dry and make it turn around I like to just use a six inch knife and I'll use a pair of textures it's an easier knife to control make sure your mugs mix but creamy nice clean straight knife that's why I use a six inch knife because it's straight there's no big bow in the center like most knives have basically just going to go through and skip trowel this no big deal this is like a Santa Fe skip trowel so basically a skip trowel put on that's troweled down heavy kind of like put it on and then just trowel it down a little more so it's smoother no big deal depending on your area you may of course have different type textures every area has a different texture I'll drive four miles down the road and the houses there will have a different type of texture the process is the same getting it coated getting it all ready if you wanted to leave it smooth your next step would just be a smooth coat of mud over everything a real tight coat and leave it a smooth texture it ain't going to be a level five smooth wall level five and all that it's like a perfect perfect glass finish perfect wall this is just a skip trowel here so we're just going to get it all skip trowel little knife takes a little more time i'm not taking up the mud in the angle sometimes you can even run it in the angle so you keep that angle nice and straight so don't have a bunch of clumps of mud in the angle so just follow through working around these lights so it's kind of goofy they didn't want to drop them and of course I'm not going to pull down any electrical I don't touch electrical they already paid a electrician to install these lights so I'm not going to come in and undo the electrical work it's not my thing I also told the homeowners they can drop it and they can get texture behind it or I can just texture up to it as best as possible so we're not taking a bunch of mud up around the edge of it I'm just going to set it a little tighter around the edge of the thing side of the brain down that's why this mud's yellow it's like a topping type texture some stores sell toppings so that's what toppings are a lot of guys like to use toppings for textures or touch-ups because there's less glue less glue means it's easier to sand if you need to sand it it goes on creamier it's basically just a creamy creamy mud nice topping that's why we call it topping it's going on top of all of our coat work this is a heavier texture so it does hide a little bit of your imperfections but we don't use our texture to hide bad coat work if you work if your coat job isn't good you're going to have to do another coat or at least touch it up with a tight skin coat before you do any type of texture doesn't matter what type of texture it is Go around takes a little bit of time. Check the angles, keep the angles clean. Let's keep plugging away. It's tedious. do this type of texture than say a spray knockdown or something like that if we get a spray knockdown I'd have to totally enclose this area with plastic I already ran plastic around but it's not sealed up perfect to contain overspray it's just contained curtain just to keep the mud and dust in the, my work area so if you do a spray type texture you have to mask out everything perfect 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 then you have to pull out the spray rig Go around the lights, around the lights. You'd be surprised. 
surprised how many of these old style boxes and these sockets feeling like this. I would say it was the craze in the 70s, 80s. Where they had the cover on here. They had big fluorescent, four foot fluorescent lighting in here. To, and then they had a plastic cover on it. So this is a simple, easy thing you can do on the kitchen ceiling if you have one of these boxes in your ceiling to update it. Cheap kitchen remodel. Instead of ripping out cabinets, doing a full kitchen remodel, this is something simple that can be done to at least make it look nicer than it was than some big drop ceiling cover boxes. These are nice lights in here. I've seen people where they put can lights, 3 inch, 4 inch, 6 inch candle lights, track lighting, stuff like that. So there's a lot of different options. Be all textured and takes time. Skip trowel, Santa Fe is what I call it. Just a skip trowel that's troweled down a little more to kind of give it a smoother. There it is. Finish up this corner here on the ceiling, finish up the sides of the box, and then we'll do the bottom. I'm going to do the bottom take it up to the plastic and then I might have to pull the plastic down and feather it out a little more so it feathers out into the old ceiling. So new meets old and it's nice feathered out texture. Nothing to it. Practice makes perfect on texturing. Once you watch this video a thousand times, doesn't mean you're going to know how to texture. So just maybe you want to practice, practice, practice. Practice on an old piece of sheetrock. Practice on anything before you commit to any type of textures that you want to do. When in doubt, just leave it smooth. Skim it out. Smooth looks nice. I like smooth. It looks updated. It looks sharp. It looks clean. corner here. I haven't even used a full pan yet of mud. I'm also using a bigger pan. I'm using an 18 inch pan. Most pans you buy in the store are 12, maybe 14 inch pan. So I do have a bigger pan. I use a bigger pan because I can hold more materials. The ceiling looks pretty good. Finish up this side here. And then we're going to do the whole bottom. We're going to do the whole bottom, and we're going to pull the plastic. I have videos on my channel like this. I have a whole playlist of just texture videos, different types of textures, skip trowels, spring knockdowns. So there's plenty of textures out there to choose from. Try to match. If it was me, I would just leave it smooth. Skim out everything and leave it smooth. That's just my preference. I like smooth, clean stuff, but we're matching what they have here. Finish up over here. Double check around the light over here on this side of the light. Clean finish around the light. The mask can work. Finish up here. Yeah, I know this is a lengthy video, but this is what it takes. These jobs take hours to do. You can also jump in my other videos. I have shorter videos and smaller patch jobs. The routine's pretty much the same. Get it sheetrock, get it taped, coated two times. If it's really bad, coat three times, then texture. I do have just one more area here. And I'm going to double check everything here before I get off this step bench and work on the bottom of the soffit. Check my angle here. Trowel it down, trowel it down, trowel it down, trowel it down. Double check everything. If you missed anything in this corner here, clean it up a little bit. Double check, double check. I like different points of view. 
right there. A little something. That looks good. Man. All right, so you got the whole box textured. The inside of the box is textured. Now we're going to do the bottom of the soffit. Huh? Looking sharp. Really looks nice. Now with the lights there installed, makes my work even look better. So now I kind of see the finished product. Finished product. Let's go ahead and get the bottom of the soffit textured. I don't have much mud in my pan, but I'm going to go ahead and use it up before I go out and get more. This picture, I want to look at it because I'm matching into it, so I want to make sure I go the correct direction. This one kind of goes everywhere, so they call it a multi directional skip trough. So I just like to start on the outside edge and go the same direction and bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. I'm going to use my mud up. I'm going to go get another pan. So once I get another pan of mud, I use two pans of 20 minutes for first coat. Not even a half a pan, a quarter of a pan to do a second coat skim touch up. And then maybe less than two pans of mud to do texture. So all together, less than five pans of mud. Five pans of mud to do a whole ceiling job like this. A little bit more mud in the pan. Take it out. And let's finish this one leg. That way I got one side complete. I'll pull my plastic here so I can feather it out. Feather it out a little more so there's not just a line there. That way the texture fades out into the old good transition. Good transition. Good transition. Double check everything. A little bit more mud here, so I'm just going to take this edge. This edge. Mm. Alright, we're getting to the bottom of the pan. I'm starting to get goobers in my mud. So I might even clean my pan before I get another thing of mud. Looking good, guys. Take it out there. Take it out there. along here. Always easier to drop the vent. I asked the homeowner if they wanted to take it down. They didn't want to take it down, so we're going to work around it. We're not going to put a bunch of mud up to the edge of it, clumping mud. Just a nice tight area. All right, feather it out. Plastic feathered out. Good transition.
said, let there be light. And there was light. All right, finish up this one little spot here. Nice transition. Take it out. Make it blend in nicely. So you don't know where it's the new meets the old. The whole goal of this is to make it look like it's always been original. Original. Don't check any skipped areas. about you guys but that was awesome masterpiece it's a small kitchen so it's really hard to tell what's going on here in such a tight confined area but it all corner bead we've got it all textured let that thing dry at least 24 hours 24 hours with joint compounds once they dry always primer. I always recommend using a primer on drywall repairs, mud. Always use a primer. PVA drywall sealer or a Kills 2 latex go-to stuff. But hey, that was a long video. A lot of work. I think I was here for a couple hours, two or three hours to do this. Installing three corner beads. It all tape coated, mudded, and textured. The kitchen soffit box. Looks beautiful. If you haven't done it already, please like this video, leave a comment. Thank you.